everybody, and welcome to another edition of Fire Up. I hope you're all fired up tonight. Yes, no? I'm so. Fired. I am absolutely. I'm always fired up for this show. I'm even chilled, man. You know when I get fired up watching you, so and I don't have to do a darn thing. Good <laughs> And sit back and let you go out there and show everybody what you've learned for the last several years. And you're doing an incredible job. My fired up and even killed, but I'm glad you're the host of this broadcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to be talking some college football, some NFL football, and we're even going to sprinkle in a little baseball, like the title says. But I'm going to introduce my awesome crew tonight. I'm going to first introduce my co host, Smoking Jeremy B. Good evening, ma'am, and good sirs. How are you all doing tonight? Doing good, doing good. And then we're another regular on our show is Mr. Ralph Williams. How are you, Ralph? I'm doing well. Thank you, Candy and uh, Scott and Jeremy. It's, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. Thank you. And then none other than my husband, <laughs> the host of most of the shows on our network except this one he gave me the privilege of he is showing a guest appearance he is none other than scott the motor city mad mouth morgan roth how are you scott doing fine candy always like to see you in action candy it would be good stuff awesome 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 what's up ranting q good evening ranting q how are you we're about ready to talk some football Oh, right, right, right. Let's start out with some football. Let's start out. Should we start out college or foot or NFL, guys? What do you no, think? No, you're starting out college tonight. College. <laughs> I have my reasons. You know what they are. Well, I guess we're going to start out with some college football. Yeah. Scott, since you're our guest, what would you like to start out with talking about during for college? Oh, come on. Seriously? Seriously? You're asking me that? Yeah, because nobody knows what I was going to say except for you. Miami at you know, South Florida. Guess what, folks? I guarantee you one thing. I will never lose tomorrow on Saturday night at 7, 7.30. Let's, let me go ahead and set the stage here, okay? The Miami Hurricanes were the first team that I ever covered back in the 80s. And by the way, they did win their first national championship under Howard Schnellenberger. I did cover them for two years when I was attending college. And guess what? I'm back with Canes again. However, they're playing my alma mater, University of South Florida Bulls. Oh, goodness. Uh, no, I don't have a heart which is torn up. I don't care. It's going to be a good football game. A lot of people are saying it'll be lopsided. But my big question is, Candy, will Cam Ward actually be able to play four quarters? I don't know. Do, you, do we want him to answer that question or talk a little bit about it from last as a week? Ma as a matter of fact, yes. Guys, we have a little short clip. Let's listen to the clip. Cam, it's inevitable you're probably going to play four quarters at some point. But what's it been like these first three games, the fact that you've played at least three quarters to try to give yourself uh, some rhythm with the offense and, and be able to see the other guys develop at the same time? It's good for everybody. Um, I think especially, you know, how well we want to play this year, how deep of a run we're trying to get to. Um, you know, it's good to know that we can rely on the backups and twos. I mean, you've seen Emory out there, he's throwing seeds. So, you know, that boy that boy played good. Um, he should have had two tutties, one of Ray Ray. He could have thrown a little bit farther. It would be smooth, but he threw a good ball. Um, but it's, it's smooth to see, you know, him playing out there, especially, you know, what he went through in the past. Uh, you know, he's there for me every day. He reached there for me every day. Uh, we watch tape on the sideline after every drive me and Reese do. So, you know, we all motivate each other. Uh, so it's good to see Emory out there. Yeah. All right, okay. so there you go. So there you go. Let me preface what I said because, number one, Miami clobbers Florida 41-17. All right, let's go back down and play our opening game at home. And guess what? We had FAMU, Florida A&M University. Everybody was looking for the band. It didn't show up. Well, it didn't look like the football team did either. Although I will say one bright spot in there was Daniel Richardson, the quarterback for Florida A&M, a kid that transferred up there from FAU. And Coach Kirstable went out there and had some steep praise for him. So what – and then finally – so here we go. We got Florida, 41-17, right? And then you also have F 
56 to 9, I believe, back at Hard Rock Stadium. And then finally, the 62 to nothing uh, over Ball State. And none of, and every one of those games, okay, Cam Ward started, got in 300 yards a game. Okay, another story. And you know what? Didn't finish it. But I think he's going to be playing the entire game against USF. And I even told Coach Cristobal, you're stepping up in class in opponent. He says, yeah, he knows that. And But he was able to go out there and get a good look at all the players. And we had put that clip on yesterday's edition of the Sports Exchange. But Cam Ward's a heck of a player. Jeremy, you're going to talk a lot more about this guy as time goes on. Not only reading what I send you, but in addition to when you start to get in a draft evaluation later on. Right. Well, you know, he is developing a good program there. We got Joshua Dorsey and Scotty Slapper, Smoke and Jay, Candy and Mr. Yes, Ralph absolutely. Of Williams. Nope, not a strong beer tonight. <laughs> uh, Zach Zenner basically broke his neck and retired from football and has a, an active family practice now. But what, the one thing about Cam Ward, I can tell you, he makes the game look really easy. Here's a guy that's smart. Obviously, he's a C, he came to the Hurricanes via the draft portal from Washington State is what he did do. So this guy here, I'll be interesting to see over the next several weeks now that we're going to be playing a lot more quality opponents, how he does. But he's off to a nice start. He really is. And right now, our business is – Take care of it. This is hard for me to say. His next business or ours, because I am going there as a Hurricanes writer, is to take care of the University of South Florida. So, be interesting, yes. but he's a heck of a quarterback. He is. I I have to admit, watching him play, he's he's one of, almost a generational type quarterback. I haven't seen too many of those where he knows the strengths of his receivers. He knows um, he can read plays. He can read defenses. He can move around with his feet, which make him, makes him kind of elusive, kind of in that, you know, kind of quarterback. Get Whoever gets him in the NFL draft will be lucky. Well, on future shows, Candy's going to play a clip of Xavier Restrepo and Cam Ward. I just felt tonight I wanted to go with the clip with Cam Ward only playing three. But Candy will definitely have one of, for Xavier Restrepo and Cam Ward because they make a great combination. They've had four touchdowns in the first three games, so an impressive duo as well. Yes, Below's late show, but normally our fire-up show starts 9, 9, 10, 9 to 15 in that air, arena. So we do a little bit later. I guess we, we're, we're – Fighting the Thursday night football TV, and I had, haven't even looked. I know it's the Jets and the Patriots, but. No, the Patriots. Hey, below, let me ask you a question. Why the hell are you worry about a late start? You're in Texas, pal. You're an hour behind. Seriously? You're a <laughs> sick to man because you think 8 o'clock is late? I don't know what kind of job you have. Hey, Josh, how you doing, buddy? So what going on blows? Obviously, there seems to be a little bit of a detour it is brain about the time. Okay. Andy, second quarter, New York 14, Patriots 3. Okay. So, one minute okay. left to the half. So, so b -Lows, just so you understand, my brother from another mother, because you've come a long way in the chat room. i got to give you that, pal, especially when you went out there and talked to Larry Bluestein and acknowledged his beer cans out there. That was a pretty good little exchange. But b -Lows, you're in the central time zone. Seriously, you consider eight? Give me a break. Yeah, Josh, tell him. Blaz, stop being a sissy. I couldn't agree with you more, Josh. <laughs> Seriously? Really? You worried about a late <laughs> show on the, in the central time zone? That's my rant of the night. Oh, goodness. But, Josh, hi again. Keep. You know what, Josh? Do me a favor, okay? I want you to go ahead and give him the ball buster so, you know, Jeremy can read out of the chat because my – my, my buddy here is trying to make sure I have a voice for a while, right, Jeremy? He looks oh, out for yeah. me, and so does Candy, and so does Ralph. But Jeremy, Candy, oh, you guys. Uh, we got to call this a lookout crew for Mr. Trouble. <laughs> Seriously. So anybody right. else want to talk about some of the college games? What are we looking forward yeah, to this Florida, weekend? Yeah, Florida State's 
We're going to find out what they do. Uh, big ruckus going on down there. They want Mike Norvell fired. Uh, they want to bring in Jimbo Fisher and all that other stuff. So, uh, you know. We'll, yeah. No, no, yeah, Ralph. They're stuff. not 0-3. They're 0-3 on the season, but they've lost four straight. Yeah. Right. So, Ralph, journalism 101, little brother. Get your facts straight and carry it over. It's 0-4. 0-3 this year. I'll give you a half. I'll give you a half a credit. Right. Well, I haven't. I, I don't even know who they play this week. I didn't look. See, so I haven't even looked. I'm too busy focusing on <laughs> Miami. And how about Cleveland. how about Jeremy there? How about Michigan squeezing it out against Arkansas State by ten points? Well, you know, that was after they put the backups in. They were up twenty-eight to three. They put in the backups, and then the backups oh. they were beaten up in garbage time. So that's what happened. Once they were up twenty-eight to three, it was cruise control for Michigan. Yeah, a little so foot, a little Florida foot note State there. Not plays California. University of Cal. Okay. But yeah. we're finally going to get to see what Daniel Orgy will do because he was announced as the starter. And I found out all the media released it starting on Friday and Saturday morning that they wanted to go with Jake Tatum, the one, the other quarterback. But when they did their pregame check on him his knee was still messed up it wasn't 100 percent, and they didn't want to risk it okay all right go ahead and put that next chat up uh, that next comment up about joshua uh, well, basically you say that? all right here, here joshua i'll be at the game in the press box you'll be there though good stuff pal okay awesome. yeah you're right Thank you. yeah you're right scott uh florida state could be zero and four if they're playing cal cal straight and oh well, but they've lost four straight dating back to the Georgia yeah. beating that they suffered over at Hard Rock. Mm -hmm. Michigan plays USC, so that's going to be one that's of That's going to be a great game the right there. Ten. Yeah. Well, oh, good, Candy. You just reminded yourself tonight to go ahead and tape that game and get rid of the Texas game. So that'll be your one final. of the old Pac 12 teams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I'd love to see him play USC during the winter time. Then we'll see what happens to those. Trojans. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah those, the, I don't know. Those Trojans are going to find out what the new word of frostbite is because you don't see that in Southern California. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. All the Pac-12 schools are going to get humble when they play in these temperatures in November and late October. I'm anxious to see if Pitt will ever play Stanford. Stanford's in our league too, I believe, in the ACC. Yeah. Now, yeah, Stanford, Cal, and SMU. Uh, here's the thing with USC. We're going to see how they handle traveling east now. Yeah. Right. They're going cool. the three time zone thing from the Pacific to the eastern time zone. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens, say, say the least. Right now, I know USC is favored, and there's something about Michigan when they're an underdog. They seem to come out with a chip on their shoulder. And that defense looked like it turned the corner, the first string defense last week. Because literally, they only gave up 58 yards on the ground. And they really? Yeah, I didn't see it. They only gave off. up 200 through the air, and 100 of that was between the end of the third quarter and the fourth quarter. So, you know, they were shutting the other team down for the most part. Like I said, it was 28 to 3. Even though there was three interceptions, their field goal kicker, I swear to God, I, I'm going to use a nickname that I've heard lots of times about bad kickers. He What's had Shankopotamus syndrome. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what, Jeremy? I have to take your word on that. I, Candy and I were too busy dealing with lightning down in Hard Rock Stadium. So, and two and a half hours. Game, yeah, I was going to say that game was delayed. Every time I kept seeing it on the screen, the time kept getting bumped up more and more. And I, so. Yeah. And every time I kept hearing the press box announcer, the PA announcer, it kept getting bumped up. There was no more food. Luckily, I had my grub a little bit earlier, but... Let me tell you something. It was a lot. A 3.30 game turned out to be 5, 6 o'clock, I think, whatever the heck it was. We get home till a little 11 o'clock. We left the joint around 12, 12, 30. We had an 11-hour day. Doesn't matter. I enjoyed it. I got to make more networking. Every time I go to a game these days, guys, I network anyways. The game is there. We'll get the score. We'll do what we got to do. I always love post-game anyway. But for me, it doesn't matter. You know, it ultimately gets done. Well, and I will say this this is a good timing, I guess, because Wisconsin actually has a bye this week. 
And as I don't know if all of you know, but Tyler Van Dyke used to be the quarterback for the Miami Hurricanes last year. He used the transfer portal and and transferred to Wisconsin. And on the opening drive versus Alabama, he went down, tore his ACL out for the season. That's too bad. Oh, my. Yes. Too bad. And I'm not saying that Wisconsin would have beat Alabama, but it would have been a definitely a different game had Tyler played the whole game. He was driving them and um, taking him down to score on the opening drive when he got injured. So, uh, unfortunate. unfortunate. Yes. Yes, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, you never want to see any anybody go down with an injury, especially one that is going to take the whole season away from him. Right. Well, the thing is, well, he'll probably most likely get another – red shirt year to come back so due to injury so you know i have a feeling he will it's certainly not going to go pro i don't believe but we'll see hopefully he rehabs and he does another i'm glad luke fickle was able to recruit him he's a good uh, recruiter anyway luke fickle yeah yeah i think wisconsin will be fine with luke fickle for all you doubters of luke fickle oh i don't doubt him well no i didn't did i say i did i I say you okay good (laughs) <laughs> Good. Let me finish. Kidding. Go ahead. All right. Luke Fickle's won everywhere he's gone. Really? Yes. He'll win in Wisconsin. There you go, Ralph. I hope so. Hey, he was a candidate. He was a candidate for the pitch job, and they took Narduzzi. So, no. How do you okay. Any other college games or any college topics we want to talk about? I I talked last week. The tennis or earlier this week, Tennessee is adding us. Um, uh, tax to their season ticket holders ten <laughs> percent to pay for NIL to give oh, some more money my. for the NIL. Oh. On top oh, of the what four point five percent increase for next year, they are already going to instill. Right, they already had a five percent, so an additional ten. So that's a fifteen percent increase. Well, yep, it's weird because most college games are almost more expensive than NFL games in their area already because of the money they put out there. And it's it's a travesty. That's a blows. has got to come back, Jeremy. Go ahead and read it with Andy Post. It. Sorry, I've been up since 5 a.m., so it seems late to me. Oh, that's good, you know, because 5 a.m., it's 8 p.m. where you're at, or 8.35, I should say. Or wait, no. Two hours behind, right? Is he central One. or is he mountain? Central. I think it depends on the East or West Texas. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay, Blows. I'm just giving you a hard time. And, and, and the world of you guys is called ball busting, but I can get away with it because your, your phone your phone rings about three to five times a day on an ambitious day. I was up before 6 o'clock, and I'm hosting this show at this point. So I don't want to – it seems a little late. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. he's an hour behind. Yeah, he's central time, it looks like. Exactly. Yeah, he's an hour behind. Yeah, Blows, you know, I got to tell you something about this guy. He's a real sensitive guy. He is. He's a nice guy. He means well. But every now and then, you know, he makes one of those Gomer pile mistakes, which is a which is a really tough mistake to make, but then he thinks it through. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Yep, 835, Jerry says. Okay, good. I appreciate you guys being here in the chat. Amen. That's the important yeah. part. You're here yeah. you're commenting. Make sure you like the show either before or on your way out because that's what helps us grow. Exactly. Correct. Correct. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Should well, we here, you know, keep the love going for Ralph. We got to stroke Ralph a little bit here. Go ahead, Jeremy. Read it, though. <laughs> oh, there you go. He loved your show on Saturday, Ralph. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for participating. There we go. He's going to try and tune in this weekend, too. That's awesome. Good. Great. We appreciate that. I get. A, I have a new lucrative audience and more subscribers because of this show and because of Jeremy's uh, shows as well. That's awesome. All right. Well, hopefully our show will help you a little bit. But yeah, and Jeremy being on my show, Scott being on my show on Saturday helps out too. So we all help each other out. I mean, yeah, I don't have to. I don't have to produce it. All I have to do is what I do on this show. Talk. Go up. Now, I have more voice in the morning than I do at night when I'm really pushing the envelope, but who cares? This is a business we love. 
This is why I'm probably going to have throat surgery next year, but who cares? Okay. Is it time for the NF? Uh, uh -oh. <laughs> yes. Yes. Everyone watch that show Saturday mornings, 9 a.m. Eastern. Ralph, was I not right about Kentucky might take it to Georgia? Yeah, you were right. Absolutely. You were right. I, I, I couldn't believe it when I was when I saw the score and they were actually leading at one point. I was like, man, I guess they'd play them tough, but I didn't think it would be that tough. No, so let, me ask, let me ask you a question, Jeremy. Okay. Was that a topic on inside the pick in Tuesday night? Yes, it was. Bingo, great minds think alike. What a beautiful thing. So I do have to ask you guys, I, I know we just said we were going to go to the NFL, but I want to backtrack. Texas has said they are starting Manning as quarterback. How do we feel about that? Oh, another Manning getting ready to come in. will be in the league, uh, you know, of the Manning tree. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what he does. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm interested to see what he does. I, truthfully, so am I. Because uh, we've heard how great he is. We've seen him come in after Ewers got hurt last week, and he threw for over 100 yards. He rushed in a touchdown. He threw three touchdowns. I mean, the kid did it all in a quarter and a half. In a, in a quarter and a half. So yes. let's see what he can do with a full game because that, that Texas O-line is pretty stout. Yeah, no problem. I think it's great. We'll see what – right now he's taking over for an injured Ewers. The question is, will Steve Sarkeesian keep it going? I don't think so. I think he's going to go back to Ewers unless Arch Manning is playing extraordinarily well, then he keeps him. But, I, you know, that's good. It's a good problem for every head coach to have. You have two good quarterbacks. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something, too. Here in Miami, we have another good one waiting in the wings called Emory Williams. This kid's unbelievable, Emory Williams. He went 11 for 12. On Saturday, I think for 140, 50, 60 yards, something like that. Don't have the top, but he had a nice met game as well. And that's the one thing that in the sound clip that you heard that Cam Ward was saying, you know, hey, listen, we're a good tight knit, tight knit quarterback groom. It's what we have. And I'll tell you one thing, Emory Williams got to be loving it. I, I, eventually, I think he's going to be the starting quarterback once Cam Ward turns pro next year. So he's getting some good reps. He's getting some good instruction. So watch out for the name Emory Williams, folks. You know, and that's pretty much like what you have in Texas. Arch Manning and then, of course, Ewer. So you always want to have two good quarterbacks to carry from the next year. Go ahead, Candy. And the one thing I will say is <laughs> if, if most of you might not know or remember, Emory Williams is coming back from an injury last year where he got injured at the Florida State game. Um and he, it was, I'm just going to say it was a gruesome art arm injury and let's leave it at that. Um, yeah. But for him to come back and stuff like that, slowly and good, it's good to see him. Um, this Henry Williams is a good quarterback. There's no doubt about it. Oh yeah. Yes. Being number two again behind Cam Ward didn't the worst thing in the world to do. He's going to play. Sometimes a quarterback can play one or two years. You know what happens? They're good enough. They end up in the NFL. Or they'll pro play pros. I'm probably going to do a segment on how many UFL players made it to the NFL, but I'm either this week or next week. Some of my shows are based on who's on the air with us, and I try to cater topics to their area or expertise or whatever makes the most sense. So, but yeah, Andy's yeah. right. I mean, he did come back from that gruesome arm injury, and but you know the best thing I like about Emory Williams. Great question. Great question. He says that 15th time in a press conference. Boy, even a guy like Jeremy Balrick never had any experience. He'll be, he'll be able to stroke your ego so good. Balrick, you ever end up in there with me? He's going to say, great question. Great question. <laughs> nice game. Hey, go. Ralph, you ever get, if you ever get in the locker room, or oh, they don't do locker rooms, but they sit in the media room. Great question. Great question. He'll even tell you that. So All if you ever make a mind me. Is What's, that I only have one chance to interview some ask a question in front of somebody in front of you. Yeah. And you were like, I was impressed. That was a good question. Yeah, I was. And how did you like the one with Mel Mel Owens? Oh, that was great. You had yeah. a great interview with him. Why, why don't you go ahead and tell him how we pulled that off? The professor and the pupil has now made an appearance on fire. 
what were your thoughts about the way we snapped that guy up? Well, that was great. I mean, you you recognized him. You said, "Oh, I got to go. I got to go talk to him right now." That's Mel Owens. You know, right. and I was like, at the time, I'm like, um, okay. <laughs> And then, you, and, then, and then he went out there in the room and watched me interview the guy. And to me, that's just one of those things where I can come up with an interview on the fly. And it's easy after all this time. You don't figure it out by now. You never will. Seriously. Seriously. Yeah. And Ballroom got to see it firsthand. We don't mess around when we cover events. We, <clears throat> I don't care how many shoes I wear out. I'm going to go out there and get what I got to get. Yeah. Like Adrian Wojnarowski, who retired yesterday, got burned out. Now he's going to St. Bonaventure. No, that wasn't probably a topic, but it's just this is all part of journalism 101. You have to grind and you have to bust your butt and break every story you can, but do it ethically, right? Just like Candy will, will promote my book in a few minutes. Oh yeah, you wrote a book. Let, let's let's go ahead. Let's quick let's quick promote it right now. Okay. Last November, Scott, the Motor City Madmouth Morgan Roth wrote a book, Lessons from the Microphone, to gain the enduring wisdom of visionary leaders. It talks about how his 40 plus years in journalism and how the media has changed over those years. It is available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Kindle, Apple, and Google Books. There's also a link on our website, www.selfloridatribune.com where you can find that and a link to our merchandise store and to Jeremy's articles, Scott's articles, my pictures, go check out our website. Let's go back to the chat. Yes, Scott wrote a book. Yes. Amazing. I didn't know. Oh I didn't goodness. know that either. Wow. <laughs> I knew. I knew. <laughs> Josh, 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 I think your news bulletin's a little late. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, so let's switch on over to the NFL. Let's talk a little bit. And this is going to be, and I can't believe I'm talking about the Carolina Panthers, but <laughs> they are benching Bryce Young. How do we feel about that? Yeah. Um, the beige water pistol, as I call him, known as Andy Dalton, because he's no longer the red red rifle is that he doesn't have that arm strength to push it push the ball downfield anymore he's played for carolina before and it didn't go that well and they haven't done enough to fix the o-line first and foremost so i'm not as excited for andy dalton as some of the panther fans are what do you think scott here's the thing you have a young quarterback. I always my, my philosophy is they got to sit a year. You really do, and maybe a year and a half to two years. That's a recipe that worked well in Green Bay, and it has in a lot of other places. Even Kansas City had Patrick Mahomes sit for about a year. So I understand Bryce Young is a little upset, has every right to be, but the reality is Carolina got hosed in that trade to begin with, by giving <laughs> Chicago all that. Okay, but my point here. I want to make this is this is not a joke. This is reality now. Is I believe a quarterback should sit one or two years, no matter what. Period. I, and I think that Andy Dalton over the years has been a capable quarterback. I'd love to have him if I had a team myself because he's smart and he knows the game of football. This guy will eventually be a coach one day. I do see that Andy Dalton as a quarterback coach. So the Carolina Panthers are an absolute train wreck, anyhow. How you can blame Rank, Frank Reich after what, what one and nine, one and ten last year, to me was a totally ridiculous. It really, really was. So you know what, Bryce Young. Here's two things that I picked up on this week. Ryan Leaf made an idiot out of himself when he talked about Bryce Young and Cam and Baker Mayfield was defending the kid. That don't worry, you'll be fine. And Baker Mayfield can because he's been with a few stops and finally landed somewhere where he's happy and look what's happening in Tampa. He's done pretty well. So as much as you, this move is gaining an awful lot of publicity because of the drastic nature of it, you know, Bryce Young, I would just sit, hold the clipboard, let him pay you, and then play when you're in a position that you're not going to get beaten up badly out there. That's what I would do. I don't feel sorry for him because I think he's going to be better off this way in the long run. Ralph, what do you think? 
Well, you know, Scott, I'll just reiterate what Scott said. It's a train wreck up there in Carolina. If I'm Dave Canellis, I wouldn't have, I, nobody should have took that job. Uh, you know, I feel bad for him. He's a good coach. Uh, we'll see what he does in Carolina. Andy Dalton starting might be something, you know, let's see if, uh, the, uh, or, um, uh, the De Deontay drops in there, uh, who play, who used to play for the Steelers is now with the Carolina Panthers. You're not doing too well. Uh, you know, so we'll see maybe Dalton will throw to him. Maybe he'll catch some passes and, or drop some too. Cause he was, you know, we used to call him drops in here. So, you know, but anyway, um, you know, so like I said, you know, I, I think Carolina is just a mess. It's just, it's a team. It's a mess. And, uh, you know, if I'm any fan, I, I don't know if I'd want to go to a game or not. I don't think I would. And, and, again, I'm really surprised that Dave Tepper, he's an educated man from Carnegie Mellon University here in Pittsburgh and one of the um, most expensive universities in the United States. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just shocked at how he conducts his business. Yeah, you and everybody else were out joining the club. Yeah. Do you think that Bryce, this will help Bryce, or do you think this will – hurt him do you think he'll lose confidence because you know he's been in there and now and i get it it's a new coaching tree um but i don't know i'll save you where you're going with this okay because i know you as well as you know me in the end if he's as smart a kid as i think he is he'll go out there think things through and know and understand it will help him Right now, he's a little emotional because everybody said he was their quarterback, and then 12 hours later, he finds out he's number two. That's gonna that's a bit of a shocker there, really, yes, to begin with. But in the end, sometimes you do need a little bit of time is what you do need to try to let things sink in a little bit. Yeah, all right. If he handles it the way I think he should handle it and the way that he's being advised to do it. And he's got and Adam Thielen went out there and told him, don't worry about it, kid. You know, I've, I've got your back. And I had a feeling it's like a while. So I, well, hope, I, I, hope, I hope that answers your question, Candy. Adam you Thielen think, says, I got your back because he's seen Andy Dalton play. Okay. I'm yeah, he, the smart thing for him to do is to just sit back and, and, and watch Andy Dalton and watch what he does. Because Andy Dalton, as Scott mentioned earlier, is a, is one of the better quarterbacks in the league as far as experience and knowledge, and he wins when he plays most of, some of the time. I agree with Jeremy; he probably doesn't have the arm strength he used to or the oomph he used to, but he's an experienced veteran, and that's and you know a coach always needs an experienced veteran to back up a, a young quarterback like Bryce Young. Well, Ralph, keep in mind, when this guy was in Cincinnati, guided the Bengals, I think, eight playoffs yes. first. Now, mm -hmm. albeit they didn't win one, but so what? You got him in the playoffs. Yeah, he was with the Bears, too, and a few. Well, yeah, he around a little bit. Yeah, around, I mean, yeah. But the point is, I'm making, Ralph, is the guy took the Cincinnati Bengals yes, to the playoffs he eight years ago. He didn't win a playoff game. So what? He got you to the big show. You That's know, right. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to chastise his playoff record, but he did take him to the playoffs. He didn't win. So what? But he can win. I, I think he's got his head work cut out for him with this group around him. But, you know, he's being paid and he's a veteran. And I think he'll make guys team. better. I uh, mean, me yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, I do too. He played in, what, three games last year. He completed 34 of 58 for a percentage of 58.6. He had 361 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, three sacks. Um, I, so he, he hasn't played as much. Like the first year he was in the league was 2011. He played 16 games, then 16, 16, 16, 13, 16, 16, 11, and 13. That was all with the Bengals. Then he went to the Cowboys and played 11 games. Then the Bears, he played eight. Then he went to the Saints and played 14 games. And then three last year. And then one technically this so far. So it'll yep. be interesting to see how well he does. Yeah, with, but he has. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I said it, it'll be interesting to see how well he does with the team he has around him and the supporting cast. 
and I should say more the lack of supporting cast right. he has around him. And we we sit here and we look at Bryce and yes, I asked the question if we thought we how well he would take being benched. But I also think part of it has to do with his surrounding cast and not only watching Andy play in this offense, but watching all of the other quarterbacks you're playing against. Because I think you can sometimes take a lot from them as well, especially being young. We say we talk about he hasn't played well the first couple games, but in all honesty, we've all sat here and said Back in the day, the first preseason game, most of the quarterbacks played one quarter. The next second preseason game, they'd play a half. The third preseason game, they'd play three quarters. And then the fourth preseason game, they wouldn't play because they were evaluating everybody else's talent. But now we don't have that many, and we're not playing all these starters in these preseason games. So they're not getting their rhythms, especially in the passing game, because we've said that Passing touchdowns for the first couple of weeks are way down compared to what they were a number of years ago. Yeah, but Candy, where you're missing it here is right there. Many years ago, they didn't have joint practices with other teams either. So the joint practices with other teams have probably helped a lack of preseason games. I'm not saying that's a solution, but that's what you have nowadays. Yeah, If a team is playing another team on the road, they're going to have joint practices first and then they play the game. So. I, I, I see where you're coming from. You make a tremendous amount of sense. You do. But let's face a new reality, Candy. When you get on to two games and you end up at 18, uh, what are we going to be talking about then? The same thing. The same thing is that yeah. you're not – the first couple of games are going to be sloppy. Right. Except if you're Kansas City because he uh, Andy Reid plays his veterans in the preseason. Well, but you know what? That's when they get off a good yeah. start. That's yeah. why they won Super Bowls. Huh? Why do you think that when Andy Reid is eligible to get to the Hall of Fame, it'll be, it'll be a no-brainer. He gets he has a quick entrance into the Hall of Fame. Yes, absolutely. At the end of this, at the end of the year, though, that one or two games that they won in the beginning might make a difference, and some of these teams aren't realizing that. Excellent point. Back. So. I heard that Dan Campbell is moving. Yeah, there's some Lions fans that's been protesting outside of his house because he was willing to admit that he had a coaching snafu and fell on the sword. And I'm sorry, when you saw the sidelines, Dan Campbell was lined up next to the O-line watching the stop plot play. I think he fell on the sword for Dave Phipps. And rightfully so, because it ultimately does come down to the head coach. And this is why these guys want to stay here instead of taking jobs elsewhere, is because he's willing to bite that bullet even when it's not his decision. So I I hate the fact that we've got fans in Detroit doing this. It, it's such a travesty. I mean, he's by far the best coach we've had since Wayne Fonts. Well, I wouldn't quite go that far. I thought Jim Caldwell was pretty good, too. Jim Caldwell? If it wasn't for Jim Caldwell in those few years he was here, Matt Stafford wouldn't have 20 of his comeback wins due to his poor play calling. Exactly. Don't get me wrong, Jeremy. I I covered the Lions back in the day back home. When Wayne Fonts was a coach, I attended drafts over there, and I went to school with his brother, Mike. So I get that. So I, I, lo- I love Wayne Fonts, what he's all about. And if you've ever caught up in a draft, and he's out there with a cigar, getting the draft choice that he wants, and we're out there picking out like you wouldn't believe. It was, it was like a 14-hour buffet to keep us reporters happy. There's one thing, but Jim Caldwell was pretty good. Now, as far as Dan Campbell and the fans, give me a break. You know what? You guys have already heard about my disdain for fans anyways i i can't i struggle with it i i put it to you this way what what happened there with lions fans around his house that he is not a good situation if he feels uncomfortable there wants a little more power to him but i would i would suggest that he goes in a high rise is what i would do and not be on the ground or somewhere else like that or in a gate 
a real strong gated community because you know what? He deserves to have his privacy. He lives, breathes the game. And he was the right guy that the Lions hired to take this job. He really is. So, uh, you know, fans are what they are. They're all fanatics. I get it. Me personally, the only way I go to games, either I cover them or I stay at home. But I breathe so you, Dan. The, re the reason why, if people haven't heard, the reason why we're talking about this is he is selling his suburban Detroit home to get more privacy. There is plenty of space. He lives on two acres. The home is beautiful. It's just that people have figured out where he lived when we lost. And he didn't elaborate into anything more than that. Um, it was a 7,800 square foot house in Bloomfield Hills. And he put it up for, he listed it for 4.5 million. A deal was wow. pending within 24 hours. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, my late Aunt Mary lived in that community. Remember, I took you out by that Bloomfield Hill. Where it's a Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. It's a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. So, do we know where he's moving to? No, and we shouldn't because fans, no. you need to leave them. He's got to have privacy. I mean, all of the players, all of the coaches should have. They have private lives, just like all the rest of us. You can bash them on social media because everybody does that anyways, but that's where it should stop. It's only one game. If he made one bad call to lose one game, oh boy. You know, right. I mean, you know, it's not exactly. like he lost the Super Bowl and made a bad call. That uh, you know, right. They're still they are still blaming him for not taking the field goals, even though the analytics says taking three points when you're behind doesn't equal a win. No, no. And sometimes you got to roll the dice on fourth down when you're losing. I mean, you really, I've seen coaches do that, and that's thats what you have to do. Hey, Jeremy, give me one small favor, buddy. Don't try to brainwash me on analytics because I could carve anybody. The reality of the situation is they didn't have a kicker they were comfortable with. And why do you think that he went to Jake Bates because this kid's got a leg? And he, and he went from one end of Ford Field to the other. That's all he did. And Dan right. Campbell recognized the weakness and address it through the United Football League by getting Jake Bates. So I get it, you know, I mean, and they're talking about the Dallas Cowboys. They made it to the playoffs anyway, and they got to the NFC Championship game. So people should just wash their hands of that thing. Hey, they, they were pretty close to getting to the Super Bowl. So all this hogwash you're hearing about the Dallas game, who should have been done. I'll tell you one thing I've really learned, especially being a member of the media, is I refuse to ever second guess a coach. Never will. Because if I thought I was so darn good at it, I'd be doing it. Instead, I might ask, Candy will tell you, when I'm in an interview room, right, Candy, do I usually ask the first question or wait a little bit? You always wait. Always yeah. wait. Now, in the case of Coach Cristobal, when I asked him about those couple of games, you know, as tune up there, I got in, jumped in really early because I felt in my mind that that was a question I wanted to get out there right away. And obviously, everybody had a positive response around in the room, but I like to sit back to see where it's going and then I could be able to find an opportunity to see what can we put in there that will make an extraordinary amount of sense. I'm going to say they're great or bad questions, but you know, the reality is you want to, but I will never second guess the coach on strategy. Never. Yeah. There's no way I'll ever do it. I think it's something that, you know, if I was so good. I, like I said, I'd be doing it. Right. So, I mean, that's the biggest thing. And a lot of fans need to remember that that the casual fan, when compared to an NFL head coach, it's the same as the advanced education versus remedial education. That's a good point. I like that. That's an excellent point. I like the way you phrase that. What games well, are we looking forward to this weekend on the NFL side? I'm looking forward to see what happens because Jordan Love has yet to take practice with contact. And when he was doing his drills that I seen in a video, you could see that there is some physical physical limitation to that knee he had the injury with. And I don't think they should start him. And let's see if Malik Willis can have a revenge game. You traded me away. Let me beat the snot out of you. Right? <laughs> That's good. I'm also looking to see if Kyler Murray can get his first notch in the win column versus the Lions because he is 0-2-1 in his career starting against the Lions. Okay. 
Ralph, are you looking forward to any any of the games this weekend? Well, I'm looking at the AFC North games, Candy. The uh, you know the Bengals are playing the uh, Commanders at Cincinnati. Cleveland's at home. Steelers are at home. The Ravens they're in Dallas. So we're gonna find out who wins and who loses here. Uh, I think the Ravens are in Dallas. I took the Ravens last night. I thought they were at home. They're in Dallas. Dallas might be angry, of you know, because yeah. of their loss. So I'm thinking they might beat the Ravens this time around. Cleveland, on the other hand, they're at home, and the Bengals are at home against the Commanders. So I'm just wondering the AFC North may everybody may win this week, and then Baltimore may lose. And uh, I'm hoping the Steelers win. They have a dog fight against the LA Chargers. So we're going to find out exactly what the AFC North is going to do. Scott, what are you, are you looking forward to any NFL why, game? Why should I? I'll be traveling all weekend. Well, you probably care. I'll still be in another NFL <laughs> stadium covering a game, but it'll be USF and Miami. You know, Jeremy, Jeremy brings up an interesting point, though. And, I, and here's where I'm going to go with it. To bring Jordan Love back too premature would be a bad decision. And I, and I always say, I said it on Inside the Pitch in that, you know, Malik Willis here is going to be around the coach, Matt LaFleur, that can get the best out of him. I've, and on a lot of the guy, panel, they weren't so sure about that. So, well, that's your opinion. I'm entitled to mine. I'm saying Malik Willis has a good run up there. So, yeah, let's talk about the revenge game that faces the Packers. Well, more so Malik Willis. Yeah, I'd like to see it. I'm actually pulling for the Packers to defeat the Titans for at least that reason. The Lions and the Arizona Cardinals, well, the Lions are coming off a loss. A lot of teams didn't think they were going to lose. It'd be one and one after I the, think Arizona, the second. I forget who they blew out. I but, they yeah, but don't take Arizona lightly. I mean, they're in the second um, year of a head coach, yeah. so it takes a little time. So it'll be an interesting game. I'll be lucky to see the end of it and probably don't care anyways because this will be my last road trip for at least a little while, and I'll be able to stay near the friendly confines for a while. But, you know, Lions game intrigue. Maybe there's a chance we'll catch it when we're done. But now, you, Jeremy, you got me intrigued about the Packers and the Titans. But Malik Willis, to me, is a story in that. It is. Mm-hmm. I'm no, just that's... trying to be realistic about the Lions game because I everybody said, oh, watch out, Kyler can do this and Kyler can do that every mm-hmm. time we played. And let's not forget, he tied the first game versus – a Matt Patricia ran defense, and then he lost to a Matt, Matt Patricia defense. And both times it was in their house. Right. Yeah, the reality is, is I haven't looked at the NFL schedule that much this week because, you know, here in South Florida with the weather being what it is, I've been really sidelined for a lot of the week because of my bad arthritis and the rain, rainy conditions we've been subject to. So I haven't looked at it. Plus, I'm focusing ahead with the Miami USF game. So my mind has really been there. So I, I do watch some NFL, but right now my, you know what, to me, life right now is anytime I can work in an NFL stadium on Saturday, it's a beautiful thing. So I can see the games on Sunday. And that's not to say I won't cover an NFL sanctioned event down the road because I'm sure I will at some point, but covering the Canes on Saturday and occasionally the Owls, it's not a bad life when you have Sunday off. Let's face it. There's also a matchup, two unbeaten teams that I don't think we would have thought they would have been unbeaten at this point. But C.J. Stroud goes against Sam Darnold. Who's I thought, gonna yeah, Minnesota kind of surprised me, uh, but this is the Sam Darnold resurrection. I mean, because I, nobody expected Sam Darnold after he's failed to, to do anything in Minnesota. And uh, here we are. He's doing who, who do you count as nobody? Let me ask you that. Well, there, there's a lot of people out here, you know, I'm part of the round table with Jeremy that never thought Sam Darnold was going to do anything for Minnesota. Well, then I need to get on your round table and whip your round table into shape, pal, because I'll do it if I get a chance. I was First wondering. of all, what's that? That didn't think that Sam Darnold was I well, thought Sam Darnold has washed ever since he got into the league. Yeah, the only you know what? I the can, only thing defensively when he was with the Jets was the Lions. Yeah, but you know what? I I can whip up on you now, and I will. Don't you ever sell Kevin O'Connell short. This guy's a great offensive mind, and Sam Darnold's in a situation right now. But first of all, J.J. McCarthy should have never been the starter there in the first place, and he falls into the category where he should have sat a year. 
but they put him out there. Sam Darnold, I felt, was going to be just like Baker Mayfield. You get in this situation like you're in, you have yes. a great coach, and all of a sudden you can get it figured out, and he's done that. So I, I tell you what, not gloating over this whole thing, but I had a gut feeling, instincts, folks. Follow your gut feeling. Follow your instincts, okay, and that Sam Darnold was going to do all right in Minnesota. And so far, the man's proven me right, albeit it's only two and two games, but a lot of people didn't expect much. And I'm, what did anybody think about Baker Mayfield in Tampa? Yeah. And now he's got himself a three-year extension worth a hundred million bucks. And last year he paid for he was able to get in the door for a mere four million. Well, you know what? Sam Darnold to me is in a good situation. He's playing in a dome with an excellent offensive coach. And Brian Flores on defense is really yeah, I was just gonna say Brian Flores, yes. Yeah, on yeah. defense. So he's got a good defense and he's got an excellent offensive coach. To me, those are recipes to win. Kudos to Sam Darnold. Okay, so we're we're gonna we're gonna switch it off a little bit because we're gonna put a little baseball in here before we go into my town and my did you know? We would be amiss if we didn't acknowledge Shohei Otani's amazing game today. Like, how do you go? How do you hit three home runs in one game, six hits, and ten RBIs in one game? And it takes him to a new MLB record for 50 home runs in a season and 50 stolen bases. And we still have how many more games yet to go, guys? About nine, ten maybe before the playoffs come up. So could he hit 60-60? You never know. You never know. I'm not holding my breath on that one because Dave Roberts might slow down it. Uh, see, you know, he may try to rest him a little bit, but unless Joe Day said, no, you're not. But oh. let's remember one thing, Candy. Okay, he's playing a team that's gone through more pitchers and politicians to lie. Yes. He has. Paid ones. <laughs> yeah, so the, he, he's playing the Miami Marlins. I mean, the Marlins have faced it. Chip, Skip Schumacher is managing in his last few games, and he'll be a free agent. That's how the con, you know, so neither side wanted to go a third year. So he played the Miami Marlins. What was the score 20 to 4? It was. Okay, so <clears throat> Otani is certainly going to reach those milestones. Hey, let's face it, 50 50 is all there by himself. More power to him. But remember, really? that was his last game against the Marlins. Yeah, okay. He, so what? He's 50 50, and the Marlins helped him get there at the end. Now he goes Roberts. home. He goes home to play the Rockies for three, the Padres for three, and then he goes to Colorado. To play the Rockies again for three more. Oh, there's eight home runs right there. He might get sixty because he's in Colorado with that big yeah, right. Miles yeah. and miles. He yeah, even he got one of the best bat speeds and the good tra launch trajectory that everybody talks about. Right. He's hitting it at that twenty-eight to thirty-five degrees, and it's heading out at like a hundred and ten miles per hour. I mean, what else do you want out of a hitter? And then once that UCL. His Tommy John surgery fully heals, and he can come back and pitch next year. He might lead the league in strikeouts. Well, let me tell you one thing: if Mike Hampton, a pitcher, left Atlanta to go to Colorado, that means he wanted to go ahead and hit. And Mike Hampton, say what you want about the guy, you know his stats in Colorado were like every other pitcher's; they weren't any good. Of course, I think they've done something with the humidor, and they try to make it up because I think they even have a no hitter out there. But Mike Hampton went to Colorado, had a field day when he was able to hit for himself and hit home runs out in Colorado. So, yeah, I guess if you want to talk about the 60 home run club, you could definitely get a bunch of them off the Rockies, altitude and all, thin air. You can, you can. It's one of the reasons why the ERA of Colorado pitchers is so high all the time because all it takes is one of those strong guys to hit the ball at the right angle, and it's gone. Well, let me tell you, years ago, I interviewed Todd Helton. I also interviewed Larry Walker, and they love playing there. Yeah. Andres Galarraga made a living hitting there, too. So, you know, back in the day. But you're yeah, right. The altitude, the thin air, they're going to hit the ball. I had to get my deep impression in here. By the way. He might get tired and then strike out the last three innings from hitting the ball so hard. 
Well, it's like that. It's like a home run derby when you go to Colorado, albeit I've never seen them play there, but I did see the Rockies over in Arizona. And I had a great relationship with their PR people. Candy, I'll tell you, they gave me everything I needed out there. They were phenomenal yeah. people. They did. Okay, before we get to my town, my segment of no. So, guys, what was and where was the highest college attendance football game? Who was it against and where was it held? I believe it was Michigan and it was versus Ohio State. No, I'd say Penn State, Michigan at Penn State. So, uh, well, I'll, I, take a, I'll, so I'll, I'll take a crack at the location. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a Rose Bowl. So I said the highest attendance it does not need to be on campus. That I that would be my second part of. So that's going to hint you guys. West Virginia at Acrisure Stadium. It was held at Bristol Motor, Motor Speedway in Bristol, Tennessee. The game brought a whopping oh, 156,990 yeah. fans who watched the Vols defeat the Hokies by a score of 45 to 24. Now, when it comes to on-campus games, that what do you think is highest? I think Michigan, Penn State, at Penn State. So actually, it's it is Michigan. But it is not against Penn State. It was against Notre Dame. Oh, one hundred fifteen thousand. One hundred nine. Yeah, that would make sense. That would make sense. But yeah, okay. the Motor, yeah, but the Bristol Motor Speedway. Keep in mind, is going to be hosting a baseball game pretty soon. And incidentally, you talk about Virginia Tech. Miami takes them takes them on a week from tomorrow night. We'll give you live coverage. Well. Good coverage here with the South Florida Tribune over at Hard Rock Stadium. And then Saturday, we're over covering the Wagner game. It'll be my first full game there anyways. Catch up with my buddy, Dom Herman. Okay, so it's my favorite segment, my town. Yay. Ralph, let's start with you. Uh, Russell Wilson still has a calf injury. He says he'll be ready for the next game, not this game will be the emergency quarterback behind Kyle Allen. Our, uh, Broderick Jones, on the other hand, uh, is in the doghouse with the, with the coach after his series of uh, that he was in. And he had three pre-snap penalties in one series. Uh, so th that's the case there. But we're going to see Justin Fields for a third week in a row uh, against the Chargers. Pirates, on the other hand, uh, they uh, are at um, 71 wins. They need seven more wins to get even from last year. They won 78 games last year. If they don't make it to that this year, everyone's calling for Derek Sheldon's head, and they're calling for Ben Charrington also to get fired. We're going to find out what happens at the end of the season here. I know, uh, you know, um, Clint Hurdle was fired in the middle of the year or at the end of the year with like five games left or something, uh, which was a, a crime in my eyes, but that's, that's fine. Derek Sheldon, uh, hasn't lived up to the, to the marker. And, uh, it looks like the pirates regressed this year. Penguins on the other hand are getting ready. Training camp is starting. Uh, looks like the, the, you know, Latang Malkin and, uh, Crosby are looking for another Stanley cup. Let's hope they get it this year. Uh, because, uh, they would like to retire with at least one more, uh, between the three of them. Uh, and then uh, that's it for right now for my town and steel. Oh, by the way, we started a, a USL women's soccer team. Uh, they're, they're called the Pittsburgh Riverettes. So there you are. Okay. Smoking Jeremy B. What's happening in your town? Well, I have two topics for us. First is baseball. It's the Detroit Tigers. You can trace this turnaround right to the last time that Avi Baez took a net bat where he hit a home run to help them win the game because that was when he hurt his back. Since he left the lineup, they are 22-9 and nine and the hottest team in baseball last night, right now. And all those people that said we were stupid for trading away the people that we had for one-year rentals to get all these young guys, every single one of these young guys has contributed during this race to get to where we're a half a game back in the wild card. Now, from baseball, I'm going to football. 
Hayden Hutchinson. I had a draft show the night we drafted him. I was live on location. There was people in the bar. Oh, my God. We're getting Malik Willis at two. Isn't this great? And actually booed the Aiden Hutchinson pick. Now, statistically, through 35 games, Aiden Hutchinson has more sacks than Lawrence Taylor, more QB hits than Aaron Donald, more pressures than Nick Bosa, more tackles than Michael Strahan, more pass-up breakups than Miles Garrett, more forced fumbles than Reggie White, and more interceptions than the great T.J. Watt. So if you put that all into consideration, those are the, that's some pretty elite company the young defensive end has matched up with, and Lawrence Taylor never played the end. Scott. All right, well, you know what? If you're a hockey fan down here, of course, people in Pittsburgh can relate. Jarmer Yager will retire from professional hockey at the end of the season. It's confirmed by his agent, Yaroslav Zedek. So he had a great career with Pittsburgh. Obviously, he played here in Florida with the Panthers. So, and he'll retire at the age of 52. Ever heard of a guy named Gordie Howe? Played into his 50s, more power to Yarmer. He played all over the world anyways. And, of course, my town, well, what can I say? I mean, you know, we're getting ready to go back to my alma mater. Raymond James Stadium is a site, primetime game. Miami Hurricanes against my alma mater. You know what? I've said it before, and I'll say it again. There's no way that I can lose. But the Miami Hurricanes, to me, are a team that shows that when when you have a head coach and you get into your third year, you bring all your own people in. I like what we're going to see with the Canes this year. Even if they lose two or three games, they're better bad because of the fact that Mario Cristobal had to take over the program, who, who, by the way, Manny Diaz is now with Duke Blue Devils and Mr. Turnover Chain himself. So I'm looking forward to this weekend. Be, I thought the Florida game would be a lot better than it was. I knew what I expected with the next two. So well, I'll be curious to see Cam Ward be able to play an entire game against an improved football team, which played Alabama tough. And they're two and one. Don't sell Alex Gola short. He's doing a good job resurrecting the program at USF. And if you didn't know by now, they're building an on-campus stadium, which is due to break yeah, ground in around October. Yeah, no, I'll answer, answer that now. They're building an on-campus stadium. Groundbreaking is around October. Candy and I drove by the site when we were there. What was that, February or earlier in the year? Mm-hmm. And that was neat. So a lot of good things for my alma mater. But let's face the reality, I'm a, also a Miami Hurricane, and I'm a passionate one. And I, I, I don't want to see the Canes do as well as they can. Let's see both teams do well. And by the way, I'll get to see USF later down here when they take on FAU over at FAU Stadium. So I'll get to see and my I, alma mater twice. And I will say that USF did send us a recent press release this week <laughs> about the new stadium on campus. So if you want to head to www.southfloridatribune.com and go to the USF um, contributor and you can see um, where they talk about the new stadium. The when are they planning the opening date on that? 2027, I believe. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, Florida, nice weather. You got, that should be up in no time. Yes. Yeah, it's good. I'm glad to see it. When I went there back in the 80s, it was a commuter school. So, you know, our homecoming happened to occur during a basketball game. But, you know, you know who else was a good coach there? Uh, the first coach that came in when you oh, guys. Oh, Jim Lovett? Yes, he was very yeah, Jim good. Lo- I'll tell you what. I sp- let, me, I'll, let me give you guys a good story about Jim Lovett. Candy, I'm sure we have a few minutes to do this, right? Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. covering a game for the Detroit for Monitor. The Detroit Monitor. Monitor. Oh. Okay. I go after – there it was a homecoming game against Cincinnati. Okay, first time I've ever seen him play. You know, first time I see him. I go down there and I, talk, I I pulled Jim Levitt aside. I did, okay. And I'm a wild individual too. Hey, coach, I need a few minutes with you. Do you want to promote your program in the Midwest? Looks at me, you know, and then, you know, we're having a little loud conversation. I said, listen, man, I'm an alumnus here. Well, I want to promote your program. Do you want to do it or not? He looks at me and then I got my voice a little bit up there. Okay. 
And you know what we nice interview on the field. So yeah, I mean I'm a bull just like you are. See the ring? I got that to show you. And you know what? Went into the conversation. And this guy here to me, I know he's he's moved around as an assistant coach. I wish and pray that he could get another head job, but because he was so physical with some of his players and the manner for which he left makes it difficult because nowadays athletic directors and presidents frown upon that behavior. But Jim Levitt does not get enough credit these days for what he built from the ground up. Yes. And I, I hope and pray that Alex Golish can be the guy that does it. I met Alex Golish last over at the Boca Raton Bowl when they walloped Syracuse 45 to nothing. And yes, folks, I did wear my USF shirt. I didn't have to worry about this one. I, I looked at Trina McCormick, who's the FAU assistant SID in media. Don't worry, Katrina. This shirt is appropriate tonight. She looked at me with a smile. She wasn't saying a darn thing. End result, 45 nothing USF. So, but, yeah, I, I enjoyed Jim Levitt. You know, we, we hit it off good. He's a high-strung guy. But I'll tell you, he knows his football. And what he did there to me is unbelievable. He had that program ranked at one point fifth in the country when they came down to Lockhart Stadium and played FAU. Yeah, I remember yeah. when they, when they were in the Big East and they played some. Uh, they, there were some dog fights between South Florida and Pitt when Dave Wanstead was coaching. So, yeah, no, I mean Jim's a great coach, and I got I got along well with him. I just I, I was having fun with the guy, getting louder than him because nobody has the guts to get as loud as I did with them. But you know what? When we both want the same thing to win and promote, and I asked him if he would ever go ahead and play the Michigan Wolverines, actually. Yeah, I'll give them a one for one. They play in my building, which is an NFL stadium. I'll go up there. Yep, we've never seen that matchup happen, but you never know. We could see it in a bowl game, Amen. or we could see Miami and Michigan play again. Although they've met a couple of times. That's all Miami USF folks for me this week. Looking forward to it. Well, on next week's edition of Fire Up, I'll give you my feedback on what we saw. Well, since it's Miami. Fire- Basketball season just for you, boss. Go yeah. Bulls. That a boy. Good stuff, Jeremy, as always, buddy. Okay. And, so, for and I'll say one mouth. thing before Candy does, Jeremy, outstanding job on Tuesday's edition of Inside the Pickets so they can all hear it. Go ahead, Candy. Okay. So, for my town, Jeremy, you've already talked about the Packers and how I agree with you. I do not think Jordan Love, I don't think they should rush him back because. Once you do that, you're more prone. You gotta, you gotta sit him another week. I know he's not gonna like that. Let's face it; they always want to play. But when you have an injury, make sure you let it heal. But more importantly, my Milwaukee Brewers won the division, clinched playoff spot as of yesterday. It was. Cool to see they were the first ones to clinch the playoff. But not only that, but to watch the celebration and to watch Bob Euchre be able to celebrate with them. Bob Euchre, if you guys don't know, and I'm sure you guys all know, he used to play for the Braves. And he has been broadcasting for over 50 years. But to give you an idea how far back Euchre goes... Euchre was actually a teammate of Hank Aaron, Eddie Matthews, and Warren Spahn. He played in Milwaukee. Then he went to the Cardinals to back up catcher Tim McCarver in 1964, and he does have a World Series ring with them. Wouldn't it be cool, and I know this is a stretch because most people aren't give, didn't give them a chance to even make the playoffs this year, The last time they went back-to-back and won the division was back in 81 and 82. 82, they went to the World Series. Yes, they lost in Game 7 to the St. Louis Cardinals because at that point, we were not in the same division. We were actually in the American League at that point. But now we're in the National League. But wouldn't it be kind of cool if we made it back to the World Series and this time if we won it? I just think that's cool. And I think it's cool that they a lot they celebrated with Bob Euchre and he's celebrated with them. Bob Euchre is 90 years old for all of you wow. to know. 
He is 90 years old. I will say, I did make a joke about the Packers when I found out Malik Willis had to start because I was praying that Jordan Love was okay, first and foremost. I do not wish injury on a rival team or anybody else that plays sports ever. Mm -hmm. But I said, with the the track record of Malik Willis's accuracy, it would be really cool if they could bring Bob Euchre and have him do the announcing when Malik Willis throws that bad pass like he's done everywhere else. And you can hear him go, and there's another lucky fan that gets a souvenir football. <laughs> Unfortunately, it broke her nose. <laughs> you know, like oh. he did with Major League with wild mm-hmm. things, he threw the ball in the stands. Oh, yeah. Well, well Katie, <laughs> let, me, let me throw a little sidebar about your my town in Milwaukee. There's a bigger story down there that you probably haven't even paid much attention to. What about Jackson Chorio? Did you hear what happened to him? Yes. What? What happened? They got you the guy not an alcoholic beer because he's. They did. Talking. So you got a 20 year old that can't drink. They got non alcoholic beer. My goodness, that's pretty. And cool you know what stuff. they had it in? They had what? it in a stroll in a baby stroller. They put a whole bunch of non alcoholic beer and put it at right in front of his locker so he could celebrate with all of them. Unbelievable. We got, we, cool. we got, we got the KG veteran in Euchre. We have the baby uh, in, in Churio. That's what you got up in Milwaukee. We got non-alcoholic beer versus beer. Oh, you got to do what you got to do, right? I, I say Pat Murphy for manager of the year. Yeah, and I say the PR guy for the – as, as a guy that's going to be in my next book for all the wrong reasons. I know, I know. Okay, so anything else you guys want to talk about? No, I'm pretty good right now, Candy. Okay, okay. Gonna... Ralph, how can we watch you and support you? And I have my own YouTube channel, Ralph Williams RW Media. You could check out all my archive versions of all my shows. I have several of them. Also, you can catch me on Facebook, uh, on uh, tw- Twitter X. Also, I'm on uh, uh, Tumblr, and I'm also on LinkedIn as well. And uh, and then also Saturday, don't forget, 9 a.m. on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch platforms is uh, the External Bum Show with me, Ralph Williams, Scott Morgan, Ralph, Leo Haggerty, and Jeremy Balrick. And then uh, don't forget, uh, starting October 5, it'll be every Saturday. Our debut show is October 5. It's a Saturday, 2 to 3 p.m., 12.50 a.m., 92.5 on the FM Dow. Sports Corner Radio Show is back. I told everybody it's coming back. There were some people who thought it wasn't. It's back. Me, Ralph Williams, Smoking Jim Frazier, and Claudio Rosano. Uh, as we've added Claudio to the team. And uh, it's going to be a great broadcast every Saturday, 2 to 3 p.m. starting October 5. 12.50 a.m., 92.5, The Answer. Awesome. Smoking Jeremy B. Well, of course, you can find my writings on the South Florida Tribune.com underneath the Motor City Tribune heading. You can also find me on the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel occasionally on Tuesdays with Inside the Big Skin, occasionally well Wednesdays with No Filter, and occasionally, no, it's every week, right here, whenever we do a show for Fire Up with my host, Candy, because I'm her co-host. And of course, we're occasionally graced by the boss. The editor in chief up there. Yes. But at the same time, I have my own channel, which is Kneecap Biting with the Motor City Lions, where I go live Monday through Friday at noon to one. And I also have Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sunday shows that all start right around 9 p.m. Where Wednesday is the big show where I have my buddy Ralph Williams here. And maybe one day, if Scott don't have a show on a Wednesday at 9 p.m., He might be able to grace and have some fun where we talk about the three biggest NFL news of the day. And we also talk about the weekly pick them. But right now, I've been blessed with, I'm over 500 still with a bad week last week. So I'm at 19 and 13 for wins and losses so far through two weeks. That's a pretty good percentage. Half of the pundits that talk on the big four-letter network don't hit 50%. Yeah, but I'll come, to, I'll come to your defense for you on that. I think that last weekend there were a fair, fair amount of upsets that nobody saw coming. And before you say anything, I don't think anybody saw the Ravens going 0-2 so, yet. So I'm actually 
So don't say nothing because I'm actually siding with you, okay? When I side with you and the boss side with you, okay, take it, shake you. your head, thumbs up, and you're doing good. Yeah. yeah. Period. Okay. Don't okay. be 19 and 13 after two seasons, two weeks isn't bad considering you only had, th you didn't learn a darn thing in preseason. So, no, you don't learn anything in preseason. The right. only thing you learn is that the Chiefs are going to come in a little more warmed up on offense than every other team because they play their starters. Other than that, we'll leave it at that. But you can also find my shows not only on YouTube, you can find it on Facebook, and you can also find it on the Huddle Sports Network on Roku and Amazon Fire Stick. Good stuff, man. And you as soon as Ken finds me a spot, I'll be on the Huddle Sports Network. Yeah, you, Jeremy, you've really come a long way in our my system here. You really have. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. And Scott wrote a book last November, Lessons from the Microphone, Tuning into the Enduring That's Wisdom so. of Visionary Leaders. <laughs> it is written by Scott, the Motor City Madmouth Morgan Roth. It talks about the, how media has changed over his 40-plus years in the business. Oh, yeah. It is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kindle, Apple, and Google Books. There's also a link on our website, www.selfflirtertribune.com. If you see that red subscribe button in our lower right-hand corner, please like it, subscribe, share us to all your friends and family. Monday nights on Fire Up Florida, we talk hockey. Then we talk baseball. Tuesday nights, we talk football. Wednesday nights on Sports Exchange, you just never know what we're going to talk about. And the same here on Fire Up. They're definitely different shows, and you never know what we're going to be talking about or what you'll see. Because, like, tonight you saw a clip of one of Scott's questions when he was talking to the Hurricane, Cam Ward, when he interviewed him. So tune in, share us, like us, share everybody, and go, um, not sponsored, go watch everybody that is on our channel. Because they give their time, we want you to also give you time to them as well we want to thank everybody that's in the chat room if you like to listen to podcasts you can find our podcast wherever you get them if you want to advertise or sponsor a show call scott 954-304-4941 again our website is www.selfwordatribune.com scott writes jeremy writes i take pictures go check it out check out our merchandise link on there as well more importantly, have a great week. And Jeremy, you going to take us home? Of course. Try every day to be a better person than you were the day before. It's the only way to make the world a better place. It starts right here within you. Much love to everybody in the chat. Good evening and good night. Scott, anything else you want to add since I kind of went through everything? Oh, you did good. You helped me save my voice for a little while. All right. <laughs> Have everybody, a good week, everybody. everybody collectively did that. Proud of all you guys. Thank you. And you gal. Thank you. Have a good week. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you.